Welcome to the WHHI TV Daily News. There's a lot to cover today in the Low Country. I'm Betsy McDaniel, and we'll get started with today's headlines. Abortion remains a hot topic nationally and in the state of South Carolina, as the state Senate has prioritized the issue this week as senators debate the House-passed abortion ban that includes limited exceptions already passed by the Senate. The South Carolina legislature is one of the few Republican-dominated le legislatures in the South that hasn't already tightened its laws to limit abortion to the first six weeks of a pregnancy. Five Republicans and the entire Democratic caucus rejected the near-total ban last September. DHEC figures show nearly 900 abortions have been carried out in the state each month of this year. Nearly half of those are from women traveling here from other states. Now, not only is Alec Murdoch accused of stealing over $9 million from his clients, he's being accused of not paying taxes on those ill-gotten gains. Two new charges bring his total unpaid tax bill to nearly $620,000. And if you add these two new charges to his other crimes, Murdoch now faces 101 crimes spread across 20 different indictments. As for paying anything back, not likely, as at the time of the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch, the family had overdrawn some of their accounts and had a reported $4.2 million in debts. We're starting to learn a little bit more about why Beaufort High School principal Carla Shelton is not in her office and won't be for the rest of the year. At least two school board members have confirmed to the Island Packet that Shelton was put on administrative leave for disciplinary reasons that have not yet been made public. And the usually loquacious Superintendent Frank Rodriguez, who's responsible for Shelton's absence, has also not given a statement. In an unrelated matter, sources are also saying that the May River principal, Joe Bornschauer, has announced his retirement. He was the first principal at the school when it opened in 2016. A portion of the South Carolina coast from Georgetown to the Georgia Line will be open for shrimping season this week. And local shrimpers are optimistic for a great season because of milder than normal winter weather. Now they just hope fuel prices stay about a dollar lower than they were a year ago. The State Department of Natural Resources wants to make sure most shrimp have spawned before opening the entire coast, likely sometime in mid-May. Over 3 million pounds of shrimp were harvested in 2021. And some help for veterans in our area is coming from the work of over 300 volunteers this week at a project at Hilton Head's Honeyhorn Plantation. The helpers from Hilton Head's Habitat for Humanity, the Low Country Habitat for Humanity, Operation Patriots, and the Savannah Chatham Authority for the Homeless are preparing new kitchens and bathrooms, green therapy spaces, custom playhouses for kids, benches, picnic tables, and even raised dog beds for service animals. All the work is done with the help of the Home Depot Foundation, who's pledging a half a billion dollars to veterans' causes by 2025. The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WHHITV. And if you have an idea for a news story, we'd love to hear it, so drop us a line at news at WHHITV.com. And now here's Justin Jarrett with what happened last night in the Loco. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by Loco Sports. The top golfers from independent schools in South Carolina converged on the Hackler course at Coastal Carolina University on Monday and Tuesday for the Skiza State Championships, and a pair of teams from the Loco found themselves battling for the trophy. Hilton Head Christian Academy took an eight-shot advantage into Tuesday's final round and withstood rival Hilton Head Prep's best effort over the final 18 holes, hanging on to edge the Dolphins by two shots for the team title. The Eagles finished with a two-day total of 581 with individual champion Sage Bradshaw firing a pair of 68s to lead the way and finish one shot ahead of teammate Gabe Schmitz. The Dolphins and Eagles also went head-to-head -head on the soccer pitch last night with Preps girls blanking HHCA 4-0 behind a pair of goals from Ashley Brothers and a goal and an assist from Caladando. But the Eagles earned a split with a 2-1 overtime win in the boys matchup. The region champion Buford High boys continued their hot streak with a hard-fought 2-0 win over John Paul II, and Grady Lamb delivered the game winner in overtime to lift Buford Academy past Palmetto Christian on the road. JP2 had a good night on the Diamonds, though, as the baseball team routed Coastal Homeschool 14-2 and the softball team beat Battery Creek 9-6. And the curtain has closed on the cross season in the Loco after May River's magical run to the semifinals ran out with a 16-7 loss at Lucy Beckham last night. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks, Justin. And now let's take a look at our weather with Maria Soden. 
Thanks, Betsy. Yep, so taking a look ahead, we are going to see a lot more rain throughout the rest of the week. We are going to get a little bit of a break from all the storms on Saturday, but then we are going to see them start to roll through the area on Sunday again. Taking a look at Thursday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy in the morning. Then we are going to see a passing shower in the afternoon. Then we may see a thunderstorm or two in the evening. Helena is going to have a high of 75, a low of 63. Bluffton is going to have a high of 78, a low of 61. And Buford is going to have a high of 78, a low of 60. The sunrise for Thursday is going to be at 641 and sunset is going to be at 801. Taking a look at the beach tides, low tide is going to be at 1049 a.m. and high tide is going to be at 321 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week and into the weekend, Friday we're going to see scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. It's going to continue on into the evening with the highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. Come Saturday it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy with highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. And then come Sunday it's going to be cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day which are going to continue on into the evening. Highs are going to be in the upper 70s, lows in the 60s. That's it for today. Let's head it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria, and we'll be back in just a moment with all the latest happenings out of the Morris Center for Low Country Heritage. Don't go away.